Welcome to another season in your life. When everything concerning your life shall begin to give glory to God. The Lord is showing my, me in my spirit that there is someone that has spiritual leprosy. Everywhere you go, people find reasons to just be away from you. I cast that affliction from the kingdom of hell right now. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I attack that covenant from the root. By the blood of Jesus, I command that the root of that covenant be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, every attack against your destiny, the Lord come against them today. Your case is like that of Joshua in the book of Zechariah. The Lord is standing today to alert the enemy that you are special to him. The hand of the Lord is separating you now, setting you apart from the afflictions of evil. The time has come for your glory to begin to be celebrated. The honor of God in your life shall begin to show forth from now. In the name of Jesus. Welcome to this moment of encounter. It's an hour when there's transformation of destinies and your life will begin to show for the glory of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I had a revelation recently. I find myself in a particular place where people are worshipping God. And then I saw some people that are rich. And then as it were, I saw those rich people. They are classy, you know, like exotic people, people that have high status. They began to dance and sing and praise God as if they are a commoner. And then I heard the Lord say to me, that is an acceptable sacrifice. I said, why? He said, because though those people have a lot of worldly goods, they are rich by what standard? He said, but when they are in my presence, that does not count. They lay aside their honor. They lay aside their glory just to worship me with their glory. And God said, he turned to me and said, how many of my people are ready to do that? Then I said, that means a poor man. It's easy for a poor man to worship you because what do they have? And then the Lord said to me, it's even more difficult for a poor man because they have a lot of needs. They have a lot of challenges. They have a lot of things that are battling with their emotions and their aspirations. And the Lord said, me, said to me that if only the poor can lay aside all their worries and they dedicate their heart to worship me in that atmosphere of praise and worship, then I, the Lord, will count their um, um, praise as a sacrifice of praise also. So the Lord told me, so you see, the rich have something that they must lay on the floor for them to worship me, for their worship to be acceptable to me, which is their honor, their dignity. They have to lay aside everything that is important when they are in my presence. He said, and the poor also have something to lay aside. They will lay aside their worry. If they can lay aside their worry and their frustrations, and they blot their mind to their problem and serve and worship me, then their worship will be an acceptable sacrifice and as after that explanation i just seems to came out of that vision so i want to just challenge you today and let me tell you god is asking me to say this to you because sometimes it is easy for a poor man to serve god somebody used to say ten you bati lo lo wo iwa ni wa lo ma wu o di gba ten yo ba lo lo ke to mo wa to wa nu e when someone is still poor and beggarly, he can bow down and worship, but when he has money, when he doesn't have a reason in terms of need to come to God's presence, that is where you know how many people are actually coming to the house of God to worship God. And you, you, ask yourself that question. Are you going to the house of God because of your problem? Or you are going to the house of God because you want to go and offer sacrifice of praise and worship to God? Because to many of us, the praises we are offering, they are not acceptable. You are in the house of God, praising God, but your mind is filled with worry. Your needs. 
the creditor that you that you owe your children's school fees and you don't have time to concentrate the lord said you might be in his presence but you are not giving him an acceptable sacrifice and if you are a rich man and then you are so puffed up by your money that you are not trying to to, to appear touch and, and appear organized and 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 comport in God's presence. God said that means your money has become your God. Because everybody will use their body to serve whoever they worship. Whoever their God is. And then immediately this scripture came to my mind. Revelation chapter 4. When you look at the book of Revelation chapter 4. When you read verse 5. The Bible is talking about the 24 elders that sit in God's presence. And from the throne proceeded lightning, thundering and voices seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of god now let's go to verse 10 to verse 11 now the bible is now talking about the uh, uh, elders the 24 elders fall down before him who sit on the throne and worshiping who live forever and ever this is the important thing and they cast their crowns before the throne saying Worthy are you, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and they were created. They, they removed their crown and placed on the floor as a sign of worship. And as I was thinking and preparing for this on, on this message, I began to now look at the kings. You know, a lot of, uh, every time I watch Baba Deboye's uh, program, especially... When he has special program, you see a lot of kings. You know, my father and the Lord also, Bishop uh, Dr. Tawakela, every time he's having his anniversary, there are always kings that will be there. And they will be worshipping God. I see some of them, they are so, they are, they are so reserved. They can only turaka, they can't really sing and dance. God said, that's not acceptable sacrifice. But despite your dignity and honor, despite your position of exaltation among men, if you can lay aside your honor and then you worship God from your heart, you, you, you let anyone that is looking at you to see that without God, you are nothing. God said, that is when your, your uh, praise and worship becomes an acceptable sacrifice. These people lay down their crowns. They lay down their crowns. Can you lay down your crown to worship God? You see, and, and then let me know, let me just be straight to this point. God is telling me that apart from those few people that is correcting, who probably allow their dignity, their status to affect their, their comportment in, in God's presence. Many of us who are God is planning to promote us and exalt us. God said, you must remember that when you become great, don't allow your greatness to enter your head. And you now begin to think that you cannot belittle yourself in the church. Because if God is the one that took you from the mighty clay and placed you among the princes, let other princes know that it is God that lifts you to that level. How will you let them know? When you begin to serve and praise God with your honor. Now, I want us to look at one man. His name is David. Of course, David was a man that came from the bush when God was going to anoint him as the next king of Israel. Even his father and mother did not remember him. And then God lifted him from among the sheepfold and made him to become the king of Israel. And the Bible says something concerning him when they were taking the ark of God into the tent that he has made for it. Let's go to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6, let us read verse 13 to verse 16. I want us to look at David there. And so it was. When those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, that David sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might. This is what God said I should tell you. That with your glory, with your honor, learn to dance before the Lord with all your might. And David was wearing a linen airport. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with sound of the trumpet. Verse 16. Now, as the ark of the Lord came to the city of David, Micah, Saul's daughter, looked through the window and saw King David leaping 
and wailing before the Lord. That tells us the description of how David was dancing. You know when you you know in those days when we were younger, when you are when, and when we are not born again, when we are used, we used to dance disco, then you'll be move, moving your feet like this, and then you'll be and then you'll be doing like this. That was what David was doing in God's presence. He was jumping and leaping, and Saul's Saul's daughter Micah saw him, and he, she the Bible say and she despised him in her heart. Hey, who are God? Now let's go to a verse twenty to verse twenty two. In verse 20 to verse 22, the Bible says that after David had finished everything he wanted to do, then he now decided to go to his own house to go and bless his own family. 1 Samuel chapter 6 from verse 20 to verse 22. The Bible says, Then David returned to bless his household. And Micah, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today! <laughs> So David said to Micah, no, verse 20, verse 21. Now, let's read that verse 20 again, because I didn't finish it. I want us to finish it. Verse 20 again. The scripture says, Then David returned and to bless his household. And Micah, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids, of his servants as one of the best fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. So you will discover from the way Micah described what she think David was doing. You will know that David did not, he didn't bother. Do you feel like saying double? He, he, the cap was falling down. All the special clothes was falling down. But he kept on dancing. He kept on dancing. And you see, for Micah to say that they were they were seen is they were uncovering him. That means probably his underpant, his his hidden nicker was showing, and as he was dancing, maybe as he was lifting his feet, people were seeing the the the, the nicker that he wore, his, his his undergarments. And Micah felt this is insult. Can't the king just be dignified? Can't he see that there are all the people around him are below him? <laughs> that was what. That woman saw. The woman saw men. Look at verse 22. And look at what David said to him, to her. The Bible says that David spoke to her. When she said those things that she said. Then David, he said, I will be even more undignified than this. And I will be humble in my own sight. But as for the handmaidens of whom you have spoken. By them will I be held in honor. Hallelujah. Let's read it again from verse 20 to verse 22 together now. I want us to see the sequence of events. Let's go back to verse 20 to verse 22 now. And make sure you are watching it as, as, as we are reading because it's very, I want you to see something there. I want you to be like David. Then David returned to bless his household. And Micah, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel. Was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself in the eyes of the maids of his servants, as one of the best fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. Verse 21. And then David answered her. So David said to Micah, It was before the Lord. You are seeing me before the people, but I am seeing myself before the Lord. It was before the Lord who shoes me instead of your father. He said, it is, it is before the Lord who shoes me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord. And I will be even more undignified than this. Oh, see, my borale, my jowa, jowa, and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the handmaidens of whom you have spoken, by them will I be held in honor. God said, This is the way He wants you to begin to prepare yourself when you are in His presence. Forget about your dignity, forget about your position. Look at yourself as an humble servant. If God is the one that is responsible for your lifting, use your glory to serve the Lord. 
That's what the Lord asked me to tell you today. And those of you that you are, oh, dear, 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 you are nowhere. You are, you are still struggling. And you are full of pride. They are singing praise and worship. You are putting your hand in your pocket. You are looking at everybody and say, what's wrong with all these people? Come on, don't touch me. You are just wasting your life away. You don't have anything. And yet you cannot serve and praise God in an acceptable way. God is asking me to tell you to repent today. Because the time of judgment is near. He, by, he, he, God is coming to judge the wicked and the righteous. So, and the reason why God is also using me to speak to you now is so that you will be conscious of this message when God begins to lift you. When the people that you are looking up to now, when they become your, 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 your peers, when many people begin to look up to you, never allow where you have gotten to to stop you from humbling yourself before the Lord. And then the Lord said to me that the, and you also need to let the people who are in trouble to know that I, I covet their sincere, heartfelt sacrifice of praise. I said, well, how am I going to explain to you? He said, use my servant, Paul. So let's go to the book of Acts chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16, when you read from verse 22 to verse 26, the Bible says, you know, Apostle Paul and Silas, they were in this uh, city, they were preaching the gospel. There was a particular girl that was in the spirit of divination. The owners of that girl, they, they will normally take the girl anywhere. The girl will foretell and tell prophecy and they will collect money from the people. And this girl, when he saw Paul and Silas, he began to run after them and say, these are the servants of the Most High God who have come to show us the way of salvation. And the Bible says she did that for many days. But one day Saul became so pissed off, he said, I command you this evil spirit talking through this girl. Get out now. And the Bible says that the evil spirit left her. And when the owners of that girl discovered that their channel of money, their sort of income is gone, they stir up a riot. When they stir up a riot, then they now make people to start beating Paul and Silas. And let's now go to verse 22. Then the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes. And commanded them to be beaten with rod. Verse 23. And when they had laid many stripes on one thing no one leg back, they beat them so much, they threw them into the prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Verse 24. The Bible says, Having received such a charge, the jailer put them into the innermost prison. And fasting their feet in the stock, he still put chain on their hands and leg. But at midnight, despite the fact, you see, just play the scenario in your mind. Paul and Silas were beaten with cane. They were beaten with stripes. But the Bible says at midnight. There's, you know that when you, when, when you have fresh wound, it is in the midnight that it used to pain more. But it is at that midnight... The, that, that Paul and Silas pray and sang hymns to God. They didn't pray and complain to God, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Verse 26. And the Bible says, Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. That was what happened. When Paul and Silas put aside their pain, when they put aside the fact that they were being beaten because they preached the gospel, when they put aside the fact that the people that put them in, 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 in prison, they lied against them. They put it aside. They prayed to God and they began to sing praises. God could not ignore such attitude when he saw it in Paul and Silas. So I don't know what you are going through right now. I don't know the inconvenience. I don't know the pain that you are going through. But I have this word in my spirit man from the Lord to tell you to let you know all hope is not lost. That all hope is not lost. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, mercy has finally found you. Just make sure you begin to worship God despite your situation. Just make sure you begin to worship God with the dignity and the honor God has given to you. 
and then you will enter into an unprecedented level of honor that men never imagine you can enter all your life. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. The Holy Spirit is speaking through Apostle Paul. He said, therefore, by him, let us offer continually sacrifice of praise to God. They said, what do you mean by that? He said, that is the fruit of our lips. Not just in your heart, say with your mouth. Sacrifice of praise. No matter what you are going through, say with your mouth. Learn to glorify and praise God among your peers. Learn to glorify and praise God for what God has done in your life. Learn to praise and glorify God for what it is you are expecting. Learn to praise and glorify God despite your pain, despite your disappointment. If you believe that God is in control and you know that every good and perfect will come from the Father, and you know that all things are working together for your good because you love God and you are called according to his purposes, then you've got to begin to offer the sacrifice of praise, the fruits of your lips. And in the last scripture I'm going to read before I pray and I close today is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. God asked me to warn you very well. Those of you that God has given you some measure of wealth, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty. You see, that word haughty is to be proud. I have come to discover that many rich people are very proud. They want the pastor to worship them. They want to be the one to dictate what is done in the church. They want every member to be, to be worshipping them. They will give more to those who do eye service than to those who, who, who do not know how to do eye service. The Bible says, command those who are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but they should put their trust in the living God. And if you put your trust in the living God, you will not allow your riches to hinder you from serving Him. Put your trust in the living God, who give us richly all things to enjoy. I therefore pray for you today, that the Lord will use this message as a preparation for your next level. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the word of God that has come through my mouth today will prepare you for the next level that God has prepared for you so that you will not misuse the next level of opportunity that God has ordained for your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because there are many Nicodemus. There are many people that will become born again when you use your wealth to worship God. When they see that despite your dignity and honor, you still honor God. They will come to the Lord Jesus. That's what the Holy Ghost is telling me. I pray for grace upon your life today. The grace to be perfect example of a humble rich man in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke every spirit of distraction around your mind and around your life. Any association that is distracting you from focusing on the Lord, I cause them today and I command a separation between you and them in the name of Jesus. The Lord will connect you to men and women who will encourage you to worship and serve God with your glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Aprofini anto di gabaline kesese. Agbara ukoni borinyo. The path of darkness will not humiliate you any longer. In the name of Jesus, I give you grace in the name of the Lord to be above all forms of affliction. I give you grace to worship God despite your pains and your inadequacies. Receive grace to be grateful. Receive grace to be grateful. Receive grace to be grateful in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you are watching me, you have not given your life to Jesus. Let me tell you, Jesus said, what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? My point is, do you want to lose your own soul? If the answer is no, then you need to give your life to Jesus. The Bible says that God has freely given us all things to enjoy. It's just that God does not want us to worship money. So when you become a child of God, you gain access to this covenant. If you want it right now, place your hand upon your chest and say with me, Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you today. Come into my life. Become my Lord. And become my Savior. From this day forward, I thank you, Lord, because I believe I am not a child of God. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Congratulations if you have prayed that prayer. 
right now three things you need to do. Number one, get a New Testament Bible and start reading at least one chapter a day from the book of Matthew. That's the New Testament. So that you can begin to know how God wants to live your life from now. Number two, get and, and, and become a member of a Bible-believing church. And if you're in Southwest Houston, I'd love you to be a part of our church family. As you join us, the grace and the glory of God on my ministry will rub on you. And perfection of glory and grace will be your testimony. Somebody is watching me as you join our church. The leadership grace in your life, the Lord just show me right, right now, we begin to show forth. And the third thing to do is to tell somebody that now you are born again. Tell your wife, tell your husband, tell your friends. Tell them that now you are a child of God. Who is Muftal? I keep hearing the word Muftal. Muftal. I know Muftal is a Muslim name. But the Lord has asked me to tell you that he has come to visit your home today. I don't know the affliction that is besieging your home. Muftal. The Lord has come into your home to give you victory so that the affliction will cease. And it shall be according to my word. The affliction will cease and the glory of the Lord shall begin to show forth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm glad God has used me to bless your life today. Do you know you also can help to also bless my ministry and help my ministry to be able to reach others? That's in the form of your gift. You can decide to just be a part of our um, great publishers club. Those are the people that help us to reach more people by supporting our ministry with their finances. Whatever you give will be appreciated and you will be connected to the covenant of grace. That God has given to me. I have one of my daughters here in Houston. She said, Daddy, every time I give you a special offering, I always encounter special opportunity. She's a fashion designer. And she began to give me um, cases. And she said she was telling her friend, that's the testimony that abound when you support the grace that God has given to me. If I don't have it, I'm not going to tell you. But even Jesus said that anyone that support or give to a man of God because a servant of God shall receive the prophet's reward. I believe I carry the reward of God on my life. And as you join us and be a part of our family, either by joining the church or by supporting us with your seed, the glory of God on my life will begin to rub on your life and every man shall begin to see it. Until I come here again next time, don't you ever forget. No matter what you have gone through in life, now that you're a child of God and moved out specifically, I hear the voice. The Lord has visited you. Your testimony shall now become. You are wonderful because Jesus is real. i see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye. Wow. I'm Reverend Simon Jibade, and I want to take this time to specially invite you to be a part of our worship service any, any Sunday. You know, our church address is Grace Ministries International 11214. Plainfield Street by West Belfort, suit D77031. Listen to me. Everybody needs someone to talk to. In case you have need for counseling, just you can just call the number 872-731-7263. Listen to me. If you are looking for a place where you will encounter God and get insight in the world, I'll invite you to be a part of our church service every Sunday morning. God bless you. Until I see you. Bye-bye.